Okay. Um, welcome everyone to the facilities committee meeting, the January meeting. Um, we're going to flip this a little. We're going to start with the capital construction update. And I, I want to thank um, the Palumbo and CPL, Palumbo Group and CPL for getting us this um, presentation prior to the meeting. This way everyone could look it over if need be and, and formulate any questions. Um, and let's go ahead with um, the project updates. Well, thank you for uh, letting us come up and do this presentation. So to start off uh, with our normal stuff, uh, the project team, Plumbo Group and, and CPL. Uh, our agenda today will be reviewing the design process for the CTE new building, the New Windsor uh, Elementary School addition and renovations, uh, the contractor progress and schedule overview at Heritage and Vales Gate, and a few things to remember and then uh, Q&A at the end. But always remember, you can always ask any questions you want throughout the project. Just stop me and we'll go through it. So, uh, with CT with, with New Windsor addition and alterations, um, there hasn't been much progress in the last month. So there's not much really to report. There's been no changes, no, no hard discussions. Um, besides, we did meet with uh, the IT department and security and went over, um, just reviewed the drawings for those types of locations, um, data drops, uh, security cameras, um, uh, Wi-Fi points and uh, a few other things, low voltage related. Other than that, nothing's really changed uh, for New Windsor at this point. We are still waiting for SED approval um, on this building. It's been up there for quite some time. So, so that that's the reason why there really isn't much going on there. Absolutely, is state education department approval. That is correct. Yep. Does anybody have any questions on New Windsor? No. No. Okay. We're good. Uh, yep. Yeah. The next up is CTE. Oh, you got a slide. Did you skip to this? You yeah, if your your slide. Next slide was New Windsor, so you just went through it. This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's New Windsor. You already took. You just did New Windsor. Done. It's done. Okay. This one, Garvey. So this is the New Windsor edition. We keep it in there, so you kind of give you an idea of what it looks like here. So CT redesign, uh, unfortunately, I do apologize for them. CPL couldn't be here tonight. So uh, I'm gonna try and go through CT redesign process as best as I can. I don't know if I can answer any of the technical questions that you might have to ask, but I will definitely write them down and uh, give them a CPL to get a response back. Uh, but I do have some notes here. So for the, oops, stay on the first page. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> uh, so the current status of the site, uh, to start off at the, the site that's there now, uh, is, is is stable and secure. Our SWIP reports are being produced monthly. Uh, we do go up there and check the fence, check the codes, make sure everything is good, even um, we do it ourselves. Um, the architect is working on the changes in the facade, which we have a few renderings here tonight we'll show you. Uh, heat ventilation air conditioning systems for, and review meetings uh, to conduct a district. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, additional meetings to be scheduled to, to review specific elements of the design, such as heat ventilation air conditioning systems, site circulation and landscaping, uh, the updated uh, layout program spaces, and the budget update will be provided following final design. Just one quick question before we go further. Um, this, for people that may not know, the, the SWIP, is that water runoff uh, on the property? So I apologize, that's one of the acronyms that I, that I did not pick up on. I'm gonna start spelling them out. So that is Storm Water Protection Management Plan. So basically, it's a, it's a mandate through uh, through the state that we have to go up there and make sure everything is uh, secure, grass is growing, nothing's no muds running into the sewer systems. All right, very good. Okay, so so here's where some of the redesigned spaces come in here. Uh, reconfiguration of the nurse's office to create an isolation room. Uh, the addition of the gender neutral bathrooms. Elimination, uh, eliminate the distribution program and reconfigure space to include plumbing program. Eliminate the main stair and replace within the open cafeteria space, which is here. And then relocate the food service area from the second floor to the first floor. Uh, addition of the gender neutral bathrooms again here on this floor, eliminate the health and foundation fitness OTPT and emergency management classrooms and holistic medicine lab to make room for veterinary uh, veterinarian science. Create two classrooms and space vacated by food service and main stair. 
and relocate the culinary classroom uh, to space vacated by the food service uh, at the main stair, which is also in the center of the building. And this is the third floor uh, addition of gender neutral bathrooms that eliminate the painting program and replace with uh, computer gaming and cybersecurity. So before we go to the exterior, does anybody have questions on the, the interior changes? I just have a question about the programming. So the programming changes were in consultation with the head of the CG program? Yes. So no more OTPT, which is healthcare. I would think, I mean, that field is booming. And I would just want to, I guess at some point we should probably, as a board, get some kind of a, I guess that would be in curriculum. Why, what the programs are going to be at the new CT building and why uh, certain things were removed. And maybe how many kids are in the pipeline and you know how many kids are asking for different, different um, categories. Like how many are asking for OTPT, how many asking for nursing. That would kind of give us an idea of where we're going to. Ms. Roaring has maybe some answers for us. So there will be an initial programmatic conversation in the capital project update at next week's board meeting that Mr. Etri will be presenting. And so the, the, that's one of the things that they're going to be talking to us about? He will be talking about that part and the team will be talking about the design. Will Mr. Etri be available so that he, he has been part of this team so that we know that? Yes. And he has been engaged actively with myself, Dr. Brown, and Dr. Campbell in preparation for next week's presentation. Thank you. And some of these were just programs that were classes that we just created within the last year, right? Some of the holistic um, medicine type classes. I can't speak to the timeline because I was not party to any of that. But he will he will be actually giving the presentation on the programmatic pieces at Tuesday evening's meeting. So he'll be there to answer. So the then that's what we should pay attention to and you know we can probably develop some questions maybe after that but to your point i think it's a good idea maybe we'll ask cpl to along with the board update just a simple here's the program for the building like a narrative okay you know. yeah because you you're moving some things around like culinary which is a big uh, a large room and lo uh, and there are other programs moving in and out, so maybe we're going to end up with extra space or whatever. One of the happen. things they mentioned is painting, eliminate painting program. That I didn't understand that, and I know you can't answer that, and I doubt that you can answer that. So maybe that's something that you should make a little note about and, and have them explain. You can't answer that either. That's, can't be art. It's got to be related to different construction. Yeah, yeah. Heavy construction painting, but I didn't. Yeah, but it doesn't thing. say. Yeah. Is that an auto body? I, I don't know. Yeah. Not on the third floor would be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I get why they're replacing with computer gaming and cybersecurity, but does that overlap with the P tech? And how does that overlap with? Is that going to be a P tech classroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll get our questions ready for that. <laughs> for next week. We'll be ready. Okay, so now we um, have some other um, exterior information. Yep, so here's a, here's a few options here. Uh, the original design on top here, which I believe was uh, mostly cow wall or uh, metal panel and glass. Um, and then we were asked to do a, a separate proposal, uh, another concept here, uh, which is, I believe, to be uh, brick. Um, and then a third concept here, same thing, just a different brick. Um, you can see the front maybe a little different here. Um, got rid of a lot of the a lot of the glass uh, curtain wall. Um, just a couple options that are floating out there. I have, I have a question. That the original design that is facing east. Isn't it? <laughs> this here is actually facing. West. That's what correct. That's actually that's the west facade there. Yeah, okay. the west facade. So, which would be the street side? The street side. Okay. So, <laughs> it was going to be entirely glass. I believe it was it, it was opaque, if I remember right. Well, was so it? it was a metal panel system yeah. with a translucent panel system. So it was an intermixed, and the old, the whole idea was because it's a single 
single sided corridor that's loaded. The idea was when you're walking down the corridor to have a lot of natural light coming through the so the the opaque. Um, so right now, according to the floor plans, that's all classrooms. Correct. So you'd have all that light going into the classrooms, and I'm sure you'd probably have to have some kind of shades. Yeah. So yeah. so before the metal panel system was a custom metal panel system. So this was definitely uh, a value, you know, looking to value the building and. Um, so between the translucent panel and the metal panel, and then there was at the uh, the gym there was a uh, a wood facade as well. There was a like a custom wood facade that was part of that. Uh, so when you see the concept number one and two, it's really just bringing it back to standard construction details: uh, brick, an exterior brick facade, different types of color of brick. Um, you'll see the top. The, the number one is more of just your standard red brick. And that lower, that lower plane could be a split face, something that's a little more robust that can really take a beating because it's 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 on the uh, ground, level. ground level. And then um, the same thing when you look at the proposed concept too is that just looking at different types of uh, masonry materials. Well, my concern is what is the programming that's going to be in those rooms that are going to have the big windows. Is that going to be something that is, if the sun is going to be shining in from, say, noon to 5 p.m.? Yeah, it's sun, yeah when the sun's what coming is going to be in those rooms that, is that going to affect the programming? If they have culinary and they have the sun shining in, are they going to say, no, we don't want that type of light in that room? Or is it veterinary? Or what is it? You know, it has to match... The program. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know I can talk to the first floor. Uh, Barbary is at the at the end, um, you know, and you have offices. But the second floor is where you program. That's your main classroom program space. I don't want it to yeah. be built, and then you get a program, and then they say, well, "Why did they put this huge window here?" Yeah. And we we're we're going to have window treatments. Um, we have that built into the project, so. There might be certain programs that want the natural light. So hopefully that's in the planning process. And I think next week, I think uh, Ms. Murray nailed it, uh, what she said. I think you're going to get more in-depth uh, overview at the board meeting next week uh, versus here. This was just to really generate some questions. Might think about what we have here, kind of show you what we've been going through over the past couple months. And then uh, I'll take a lot of your questions back to them as well and try and get you those answers for that meeting. Thank you. Can I ask a question? You always show the um, the kind of front side of the building. What does the back side look? Because that's going to get the morning sun, and it may be the same kind of problem. So, yeah, hi. So a lot of the back side of the building is actually where you're going to have more industrial spaces. It's going to be your auto body shop, your building construction, and a lot of that area is going to have actually overhead doors. That's right. So they're taking their vehicles in and out, um, items that they're building in and out. So that's going to be a very different space than the rest of the building, just due to the nature of the use of the space. But some of these, like um, Mr. Stridiron said, some of these large building windows are they are they also on the other side of the building? Because the same thing would happen. I don't think that was. Good, good it's designed plan. differently because of the spaces that are back there. So could we have like an idea of what the back side an of the elevation of the back? We'll just we'll she, get she has the right I've seen them before, so I'll, I'll just, I just made a note ready to make sure we get all of them. Put it in next week because yeah. it might it might be good to kind of figure out what is going to go where and then yes. And CPL will take you through that more detailed review of the different locations of programs next week. Thank you. Sorry, guys, I'm doing my best. <laughs> You're doing okay. <laughs> All right, so next slide. All right, so CPL continues to work with the district on modifications to finalize design documents. Uh, final design review with Board of Ed, uh, spring of 2003. Now, remember, these are all anticipated uh, based on the acceptance of the final design. Um, submit to SCD for approval late spring of 2023 and anticipating bidding process the late winter of 2023 or early 2024. Any other questions on CPT before we go to the next? 
Okay. Yeah. So if you have a bidding process, say early 2024, how long does it take to build something like this? That's a two year build. So you're talking September 2027. So you start in the spring of 2024, 25, 26. The idea would be the fall, the fall of 26. Could be That's if we get. It's well, it's two years, a little over two years, but if if we're able to really push, there's a possibility to get a partial CFO in certain parts of the building and then continue to work. So um, maybe we're still working on classroom or the classrooms are complete, but maybe auto body um, and construction academy is still being worked on. So there's portion where we're not affecting all the program. Um, you know, I if there's a way of phasing in, because the construction academy right now is right behind them. That's not going to come down until the one that's built up there. So there's always, you're always going to have that construction academy. So it's once the building is built, I, I think it's a good conversation to say how, because it's a, all day, it's a two year build. Um, so the students that are in fifth grade right now might be the first occupants of this building. Maybe. That's that's the group that we need to target for programming. A comment that you made, Lou, just um, when you said take down, are we are there buildings that will be down when this goes up? I mean, physically torn down or no? Well, so well, that's was, our decision. Uh, it is. Uh, there was at one point in time we were there was an option to take down, for example, where your existing construction academy is. I think that over time, I've heard now that that would be reused or repurposed. For something else. Repurposed as another. I don't know, Andy, you, you you know, you might know what you want to do with it, but I think that there's well, been a lot Andy of discussions. Do it. <laughs> that's three it's, years, it's more, years it's more from now. So, you know. <laughs> back in 2019, when we put this bond together, the plan was to take the auto body shop and the construction and career academy to move buildings and grounds there. Or because I have people there and I have people at Chestnut to have them more than one space. And then the auto mechanic shop and all the other rooms inside the main building, they want to convert that into regular classrooms. Yeah. All right. That's it. For another day, that's another discussion. Okay. Hey, all right. So we're good with that. All right. So let's go forward now with uh, Heritage. Yes, Heritage. All right. So the, the, with Heritage, uh, the schedule status is that we are on time. Uh, the electrical contractor continues installing low voltage, low, low voltage wiring and night shift. Uh, we were actually told today during our coordination meeting with the contractors that um, we're almost at a point where night shift will come to an end. Um, you, you won't see it like we discussed in you know, all the infrastructure that's in the ceiling, spine, and walls. Um, we've been doing this for over six months now, working night shift, right? So constantly, so uh, five days a week. So uh, that's good. You were pretty good, at, well ahead on that point. Um, on the demolition of the existing store in front, uh, we'll begin shortly. Um, if you guys remember last time we discussed, I was here, I said you won't see much happening physically on the outside of the building uh, until probably about now. Uh, a lot of the stuff on the inside uh, was preparation for the new steel, all selective demo, um, kind of between where that temporary wall was and the existing curtain wall of the, of the cafeteria. Um, so all that stuff is coming to fruition now. Uh, we'll see temp shoring going up uh, as early as tomorrow, but as late as Monday. Uh, this coming week, uh, we're waiting for it to get delivered, and then you have a three-week span. You have shoring one week, you have you'll start seeing the steel come up the following week, and then you'll see the steel trusses on the roof come up the following. So by the first week of February, you can actually see a, a structure standing out there, weather pending. I have to always say that. <laughs> so you you're going to have a crane here working to lift all the steel. Is that going to be um, secured? so that the students don't go to play back there? 100%, yeah. So we have an eight-foot tall fence securing the entire perimeter uh, with green mesh. So you can't, you can barely see through it. It has to have some sort of transparency. Um, our lock gates, everything's locked at the end of the night, everything's secure. So whatever's within that, and that, and that kind of encompasses where the addition is. So you can't, from inside the building or even from outside, get through that gate or fence to get into that site without having the combination to the, to the, to the lock. So. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, we have an FDNY lock on there just so they can, if they had to access that portion of the building, they have their own lock on there to access the site. For us, they wouldn't be able to either. So, um, Heating, ventilation, air conditioning contractor has started interior work. Uh, not a lot has been accomplished. We're waiting on a few things um, to get produced, like round spiral duct work in the gym. Um, the temporary shoring we've talked about is, is in progress. Uh, we're waiting for it to get here. Um, no outstanding requests for information at this point. Uh, no safety issues that we're aware of, reported or observed. And long lead items like HVAC equipment um, are a possible concern. So as of now, uh, we get updated once a month, uh, but we do talk about it a lot more regularly um, than just getting updates from the manufacturer. So the lead time is on mechanical equipment. We've known this for quite some time now, and even it's getting worse as time progresses. Um, we're gonna see, let's say UVs, for example, that are, that are probably the most important thing going inside the building. Right now, we're scheduled to see them sometime about July of 2023 which means we're gonna have very, very short, limited time to get these installed at Heritage because there's quite a, quite a few of them here. Um, but the contractors ourselves, we're constantly working on the manufacturer trying to get better dates. Uh, we've asked for expedited, you know, if there's a fee associated with it, expedited, they absolutely said no, it's, they're just slammed, they're not doing anything. So uh, we are working on trying to get better dates and we are monitoring it from them on a monthly basis. They send us a schedule, anticipated ship date, when it arrives, the lead times, things like that. Uh, in the meantime, we're we're trying to maybe think, come up with a plan B, uh, worst case scenario. And I wanted to tell you that, not to scare you, but I want to be transparent and let you know uh, one of the biggest issues we have uh, on long lead items uh, is the equipment throughout the district. Uh, but we do anticipate having a lot of, a lot of it here. Um, I didn't want to scare you with the July date. That's probably one of our worst dates. Um, but just at least want to make sure you guys knew uh, the situation of what's happening there. So. Uh, next slide, please. So the next, uh, the plan work over the next few weeks, uh, we're talking about shoring, uh, steel installation, steel roof trusses, uh, the installation of concrete mechanical pads, which is coming, uh, which is happening as we speak, uh, the interior low voltage electrical work on night shift, um, which again, we talked about maybe possibly ending this week, and then the layout and installation of mechanical duct work um, on Saturdays. So. Um, I believe, Andy, we, right before we came here, we got the okay for Saturdays. Yes. So we're going to start, uh, contract, the mechanical contractor wants to start coming in the building on Saturdays uh, for both buildings. I'll speak for at a turn and start uh, throwing some manpower inside the building and, and installing some of the ductwork and getting a lot of the copper piping, things that are above the ceilings. And it's tough to do at night because you have to open up all the ceilings, get a piece of ductwork up there, close everything up within a very limited time at night. And then on a Saturday, if we were to, you know, and it pertains to a lot of uh, hydro, hydronic piping, water piping, things like that. So if there is an emergency uh, or something happened, worst case on a Saturday, we always had that Sunday to fix it and not have to worry about um, having a uh, school open the next day. So, uh, and again, not to scare you, but it's kind of the concept behind uh, preferring Saturdays over, over the weekend. So, all right. So here's some photos here again. Not much is happening. Uh, what's really been happening is is behind these these glass walls here. Uh, that's what I always I call the curtain wall. Um, there's two new footings just behind here that I had to get hand dug. These columns on the inside of the building are all stripped, so you can actually see the steel. Um, these two columns are the ones that get that come out. So we're preparing for that, and that's where the shoring comes in. We can't can't remove them until the shoring. So. Um, not much really has changed on, on the face of the pad here, but again, in the next three weeks, you'll see this entire pad will be a balloon structure, so you'll actually physically get to see it in the shape of the building. So, uh, next picture, please. Uh, inside the building, to kind of show you some of that infrastructure work that's happening um, that we might all be a little more familiar with is new electrical panels. Uh, quite a few of these throughout the building. The whole building's getting a, a brand new upgrade. It's actually doubling its capacity and electrical. Uh, capacity there inside the building. So all these brand new panels, all the conduit, the wiring, and I did a diagram, I think I showed you guys last time of some of the wiring throughout the building that was happening to kind of give you an idea, but um, you see it comes out of the ceiling here and into the panel. So this is a, this is a closet for, for brand new power. So we went to the steel shop here. Uh, this is our, actually your steel for the new addition. So uh, we do do visits to make sure that what they're saying is happening and what they're you know producing and fabricating is actually real. 
So good for us. This was actually in Bonville, close right up the road. Uh, so went there, took a few pictures. Uh, next slide, please. Here's your metal decking for the roof here. And I thought I had one more. No, that might be it. Uh, so then there's your, your metal decking. So you're sealing your metal decking for both of the, uh, for the addition. So it's all ready. Just got to get it on site uh, after the, sh the shoring goes in place. You did have one more on the handout. It was the uh, yeah, pad. The, the pads, yeah, the pads. <clears throat> all right. Any questions on progress? That's good. So, yeah, does anyone have any questions before we get on to the, to the financial part of it? No. So no. just a question that I have. If When is the lunchroom expansion expected to be open? So that is, I believe our turnover uh, date is the end of summer of 2023. Okay, so in that case, at that point, will all the other work be done then? Meaning the building will be up to what we wanted for, for um, all the ventilation and air conditioning and all that. So we'll, the building will be fully ventilated correctly and or better than it is now when the lunchroom is finished. That's correct. The entire project um, is slated to be finished and complete 100% at the end of summer of 2023 for your September start of school. Uh, what I can tell you what happens after that that a lot of people don't see is, is start up, you know, balancing, things like that that kind of happen behind the scenes. But yes, you'll have a functional system, uh, equipment will be in place, everything will be um, uh, occupiable uh, at the end of summer of 2023. It's proving, proving the system. We, we really can't prove the heating until you need it. So once we jump into October and you call for heat, then now we really start proving and, and start, you know. Well, I wasn't concerned. I just was concerned that that's on the same track as the, in this particular building, the main thing was adding, adding lunchroom space. There's other things that's being done, but also that, that the air quality part of it will be done basically when, when that's finished. And that's why we brought up the, you know, we want to be transparent about the equipment itself because we know that's, that's really the heart of this project. Um, you know, that would be our only concern, but right now, if it does truly land in July, we have a plan with the contractor to work whatever it takes to get those things installed. Um, lucky for us, we've been doing a lot of preparation. That's what we've been doing at nights and we we'll start doing on Saturdays is all the power's there already, right? Uh, the valves, we've installed valves. So basically the idea is you take out an old unit, slide it out of the wall, slide the new one in. Connect the new electricity, connect the new piping, a little bit of balancing, you know, there's a little more into it than that. But the concept is is try and make it that simple for the summertime. Now we can't say that for everything, there's, there's ceiling units, there's rooftop units, you know, that take a little more involved, but um, to kind of give you an idea, that's kind of what we're in there doing on our Saturdays and our night shift is preparing for that to be easy in the summer. Great. Okay. All right. So uh, Heritage, uh, this is the overall budget and change orders executed um, to date. So to date, um, our total approved change orders is $2,293. Our total approved allowance authorization is $12,011. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'd like to explain two of the bigger change orders here, change order proposals, I should call them. Um, th with this slide here showing you in, in the, I call the change proposals under review. If anybody feels like I should change that to better get an understanding of what the sheets were, let me know, I will. Uh, but these are, these are uh, this is what basically comes in before they're approved. Their order. We got to negotiate these. We have to go through these change orders, vet them, secure them, make sure that they're they're the proper value and they're even getting the right scope. So, for an example here, uh, the change order due to mechanical substitution. So, we all know uh, the contractor came in. He warned us in the beginning he was going to switch from Aon, which was the specified unit of plans, to Dakin. So, what happened was because we went to Dakin in lieu of the Aon units, there were some electrical changes that had to be revised. So we told the contractor was, this is, this is your responsibility. You're going to pay for this. This cost is a placeholder for us to manage the contractors to make sure that they're, that one's paying the other. So you will, the district will not incur this $48,000. So our contract reads that if the contractor submits a substitution and, or, an, or equal, and it affects any changes for the other trades, that contractor is responsible for paying that trade for those changes. So we show it here. 
Um, and, I, and I could do a better job at explaining that maybe on this sheet. Maybe some kind of notation yeah, that next time. Yeah. Um, to show that this is, this is not going to be in the cost curve by the district. It's there as a placeholder because we, we do have to log them even though we get them. Um, so that'll be zero dollar impact to the district. Um, the additional fencing here, this other big number here. So we have these two very large uh, condensing units that are on the bus loop side of Heritage, right? One on each side of the entrance. Um, they're quite large, quite gaudy, and they kind of stick out. So the district had asked uh, to price up some, some uh, fencing just to kind of hide it. Uh, to be honest with you, this number came in. I wanted this document to be as updated as possible. We have not, meaning myself or CPL, vetted this number yet. So I don't anticipate it's going to be anywhere close to that number, especially for what we asked for. So I have not seen it. I have not uh, gone through it to kind of justify where it's at. So what I can tell you is that will not be the number. Um, but everything else, uh, we had some door finish upgrade that we're vetting and going over. Um, and then we have reinstall exhaust fans on R1, rooftop one, uh, and then a blue light uh, relocation in the solar array. Uh, the solar array is a switch. Uh, during the design process, um, the solar panels, I don't believe, were on the roof, and then they were there. So the old switch gear um, had the switch inside the old gear, but it didn't compensate it for it in the new gear, if that makes sense. So there might be a cost associated with having the take the, the gear out of the old solar array and putting it into the new one that we're purchasing here. So, um, and again, these are these are all under review. These numbers are not real until until we uh, give our recommendation to the district. So, so any questions? So it's under review by the Palumbo Group and CPL, and then you bring it to the district, and the district is the one that will make the final decision. That is correct. correct. That is I mean, correct. you'll go by your recommendation say, hey, we need this or we don't need it or, or it would be good to have. We can make a recommendation. And then the state. district decides. Yeah. That's who's really right. the That's final right. reviewer is that. Right. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank you. These, these could take some time too because we do ask for backup. We do have questions. It does go back and forth with the contractor um, before it gets uh, handed over to the district. All right. Next slide. All right. So going on to Bales Gate, are we – any questions for Heritage before we close out? All right, uh, Valesgate, uh, the schedule status uh, is on time here uh, for this building. Uh, the exterior uh, block walls are complete, uh, which is actually the substrate. I'm going to be a little more clear on that. You you still have a face block that has to be installed, which is your finished facade, but all the exterior CMU uh, structural walls are complete. Um, the steel roof joists are installed and decking is installed. Uh, the new addition will be enclosed, heated, and the six inch CMU installed. Um, we call these the demising walls, which are separating walls between like offices and, and hallways, uh, is our next step. Uh, the electrical roughing inside the existing building has been ongoing uh, on a night shift. Again, may come to an end this week. Um, we have no safety issues that were reported or observed. And again, we wanted the, the same goes for here on the HVAC uh, equipment that it does for Heritage. Um, they, they're both kind of the same, same animal here. Next slide, please. So plan work for the next few weeks. Uh, the interior six inch masonry walls that are all the demise walls, uh, the roof membrane, which started today, uh, ductwork installed, the new addition, mechanical uh, unit curb installation, which got installed this afternoon, and uh, the ductwork uh, installation in the gym, uh, pending and color selection of that ductwork. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a, a good look at uh, Trying to think of which side that is. This is the south side of the building, I'm thinking maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so the existing building is, is over here, if you can imagine that, <clears throat> and the main road here. So when you walk in the, the door here, you have uh, office spaces and uh, curriculum spaces here. I, I apologize for not knowing exactly what they are. Uh, a lot of acronyms. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, here's a picture of the exterior of the building. This is the CMU block I was referring to. Uh, we have everything prepped and ready to go for that heat. Uh, we do have to heat the interior block, the mortar, and everything. Is there's certain standards we have to follow for that? Uh, next slide, please. And before you go on that, uh, Bill. So when you look at this elevation, the left elevation, when you furthest left, you'll see that's a lower roof line. That's actually uh, there's office space there. There's receiving there, and that's where you connect back into the building. Uh, the middle space with the high roof. On either side, that's your uh, 
your band and chorus. And then the space to the other lower roof line to the right is the space that, uh, that was, that was all open with the doors and independent, um, you know, potential OTPT spaces, you know, uh, uh, counseling spaces are in, on the right. So you sort of see how the building is, is broken up uh, just by looking at it from, from uh, this elevation. All right, uh, here's a picture looking at your roof, kind of if you get an idea of what the metal decking actually looks like. Uh, this is the installation that happens up there right before the, the membrane goes down. And then before we get into this, any questions? Any on questions on the construction for it? No. Okay. All right. Uh, so same same concepts here. We're keeping the same uh, total approved change orders uh, for Vales Gate, uh, nineteen thousand three sixty three. Uh, total approved allowance authorization to date forty one thousand uh, two hundred seventy three dollars. Yep. Next slide, please. Um, and then this sheet as well, uh, these are our change proposals under review. Uh, we have one for a fire rated door. Um, here's a credit here, $504 for a fire barrier credit. Um, music room exit door, change due to mechanical substitution. So here's that, so both schools um, incorporated the, the same uh, change to the electrical components that MDS will incur and the district will not. And that is that number right there, $37,000. And then the last uh, but not least is ADA push plate credit of $323. So uh, two possible increases and uh, two possible decreases. So, any questions on uh, Bill's questions? Yeah. Okay. All right. And a few things to remember, I'll just go through them really quickly. It's the same thing you see uh, every month. Uh, student and staff safety is priority. Uh, COVID protocols, we're still keeping them. Um, in place, construction workers and students and staff will be separated by the hard barriers. We talked about the fencing and the site being insecure. Uh, all contractors are required to wear company ID badges and we still go through the wrapper system whenever we get a new employee. Um, our team will work hard to keep the construction site uh, inconvenience to staff and surrounding neighbors to a minimum. Uh, our construction manager has full-time supervision at all times. So if there's, a, there's people working on the job, uh, I can guarantee you there's, there's a super, if not more, on that job site. Uh, from the time they arrive to the time they leave. And all communications from the contractors are through the construction manager to the district. So uh, we try to keep that communication um, proper. So, all right. And then the last page is any questions that you may have. Any more questions at all? General questions? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. It's very thank informative. You. <laughs> you like the pictures? All right. <laughs> and uh, we'll do it and we'll see you next month. Well, maybe we'll see you. Uh, Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next board meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Agenda test. Uh, um, okay. Um, and now uh, we have Mr. Belez to go over some of the uh, building and grounds items. Item 1.1, 1 .1, uh, the NFA tower. That's the communication tower behind the school. We need to replace the light. The light's been out now for a few months. I was contacted by the FAA that it was out. I was under the impression that that was supposed to be maintained by AT&T when they took the lease in the tower, and it's not there. So I spoke with Matthew several times. So we're working with one company right now. No, no, leave the door open. Oh, sorry. Thank you. We are working with one company on an OGS contract to replace the light. We have two choices with them. One is to do like a long, long-term lease for five years that they maintain the light, and that costs about seventeen or $18,000 over five years, or a one-time payment of 16000 I think it's 400 I'm not 100% sure. They come, they replace the lights with LED. When they replace the lights, either way, it's going to be a new lighting system accepted by the FAA, and we don't have to paint the tower. The tower, the way it is right now, but uh, the FAA classification is a painted tower, which is painted red and white. Eventually, we're going to have to get to paint the tower. By changing the lighting, we avoid doing that right away. I tried to uh, get that into the contract with AT&T, but I couldn't get that there. Either way, we have to have this done by March. They gave us, I believe it was 120 days from when we started this in November to replace the light. We talked to the contractor. Once we issued the purchase order, they said five to seven weeks to get the work done. 
If you go past that, then we have to notify the FAA and show them proof that we are doing the work. I'm working with Ms. Roaring on, on the purchase order. We should have that approved by the board next week. Yeah, go ahead. When was the agreement with AT&T finalized? When we did that arrangement with AT&T for using the tower, I was working with Dr. Spiller that to include the lighting and the maintenance of the tower. You know, I was under the assumption that it was Darren and don't know why, because once I do my part, I don't get involved in negotiations. But when I contact them about the light, and they go, you have to come and change the light. The lady said, that's not part of the contract. That's when I called Mr. McCoy, renewed the contract with Ms. Roaring, and it wasn't part of it. We tried, because I know we proposed that at the beginning. Somehow it didn't make it. That's about two years old. Then. So is the, um, Ms. Manea, do you have any questions? Is, is the thinking of going to a one-time fee to get it done or paying monthly to have this, the, the, the um, protection for a longer period? What, what if you ask for my opinion, I prefer it lump sum for two reasons. Number one, I don't want to come into a five-year deal. What happens if the budget don't pass in two years? Now we have that, that commitment for five years. So I'm afraid, and Ms. Rory and I talked about it, we never know how finance is going to go. So why do a five-year lease when you can just, and if we save about 1500 bucks by doing it this way. I'm not looking at the savings. I'm looking at just getting done and don't be attached to a contract that if we have a problem later, we're not going to be able to sustain. But but the leasing that you're talking about for this, is it maintenance of the tower or is it just replacing the no, light? No, it just, it's just, just going to replace the light. They just extend the payment over five years and they give you like a fee to do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They call it a lease agreement, but it's basically a purchase. All right. I'm sure whatever you guys recommend will be. I'm working with Ms. Rory on that. Okay. All right. So that's something that needs to be done relatively soon. Yeah, okay. And so I believe it's going to be in the board agenda for next Tuesday to be approved. Okay. All right. So um, 1.02, please. At Fuerta School, about four months ago, I, I came to the board to replace the pumps in the septic tank. We replaced the pumps, and everything was running fine until we started noticing water bubbling between the tank and the road. Yeah. So what? Uh, for our, I think Darren probably knows how this works. Yeah. Behind the school, we have a small septic tank, and we pump the fluids to Brandywine Road, which is in front of the school. That pipe was broken somewhere between the tank and the sidewalk. So we had to dig. It was an emergency. We had stopped floating in there. So I spoke with my brother one night. We did it as an emergency because I cannot have poop bubbling when the kids go back there. So we did the work. The purchase order is going to be worse. We're going to do, uh, bring it to the board the emergency declaration to pay the purchase order because the work was done. It was an emergency. It has to be done right away. What was that figure for that? 14,005, I think it was. I don't have the number on it. Under 15,000. Worth it. <laughs> so, Any other questions on this? And it was done overnight. That's why it was so expensive. We found it around 4, finished around 2 in the morning. The next day we have kids in the building. Mm -hmm. At least you had... You had uh, your mind was settled. You didn't have to worry about that. You solved the problem. And, and, yes. <laughs> the last call I want to make to Ms. Roaring and the superintendent, I got to close the school because of this. I did not want to do that. <laughs> no, so no. We, I, I called Ms. Roaring and let her know that we were digging overnight. And I went home around 3 in the morning and it was ready to go. Great. Okay. 1.03. Painting up there. You this every month. Uh, we finished painting the Windsor School, Horizons, and in Guinea Avenue by Friday, we're going to finish the pre-K wing, there's four classrooms left. Uh, our plan to finish Friday, but I found out today that one of our painters had COVID, so if I cannot finish by Friday, I'll finish next week. The next school that we're gonna start painting is Temple Hill. And this is the second round of painting. When we started five years ago, our plan was to paint every classroom in five years. We did them all in three and a half. So we started again. This time we're not painting every classroom, we're painting the classroom that needs it. Like the homework room, they use a lot. Uh, bathrooms, we paint in bathrooms, sometime more than once. Over at NFA over the last couple of weeks, I had to pull a painter because we have some really disturbing graffiti in the bathroom. So all the bathrooms in the West Wing at NFA were painted last week. Two of the ones that we painted last week were painting tonight because there was some really bad stuff, uh, swastikas painted on the walls in the bathrooms at NFA. And that's completely unacceptable. I got pictures, but that I didn't want to bring them here. The bathroom that we painted last night had a swastika today. And we painted it again. So I contact Benjamin Moore and Sherwin Williams. 
We have paint that has anti-graffiti paint, but what they do is they scratch it into the paint and then paint it over. I want to see if I can get an oil paint, but to do that, I had to paint on the weekend because of the odor and the smell. I cannot use that paint in the building when the students are in the building. So we keep painting away. Also, there was one in the boys' bathroom in the gym. Overnight, and what they did, they painted the swastika and the partition. They scratched it into the partition. So we paint over, but I'm going to replace the partition because they're plastic. So now it's in better that I have to order a new partition for that bathroom. So we, we fight in this fight every day. Um, by, thurs by Thursday, every bathroom in NFH have been painted completely this week. And then we're going to Temple Hill. Temple Hill is going to be six weeks. We're doing 20 classrooms, every hallway, every bathroom, staircase, and the entrance where the car sits. I work with the principal. They gave me a list, and we put a time to go there. The next school after Temple Hill is Meadow Hill. So this time, instead of three and a half, will be probably two and a half because we're not doing everything. In Guinea Avenue School, we also painted the gym and the gym partition door. I was going to replace, but we painted because we've retrofit the motors on that two years ago. So it's all painted. I will send pictures to the superintendent to see if you want to put them in the update this week so you can see the work in the three schools. Any other questions? Yeah. What was written on the walls? Is it with marker? Is it with spray paint? What they use in spray paint. And in the partition in the bathroom, they it's a plastic partition, so they scratch the partition and then paint it over. With spray paint. With spray paint. So, so they have a system to do. The, whoever's doing it knows what they're doing. This is very sad. When Dr. Manny forwarded me the email this morning, I stopped at NFA and we looked at the bathroom and I go, I don't see anything. So I called the person that sent the email to her. So I happened to know who the person is. And he said to me, and they go inside the bathroom and turn around, it's inside that door. And it was right, just crashed right into the door. So we just painted the door, but I'm going to replace the door and the partition in that bathroom. Is it near the gym? In the gym, men's bathroom outside the gym in the lobby there. But, but it's multiple bathrooms, you're saying. Last week, we had it in six bathrooms. In basically, every bathroom in the wing, West Wing was painted with uh, stuff against the Jewish people and African Americans. Oh. Well, I mean, it's pretty sad if you have every morning have to send somebody into the bathroom. That's the first thing we do in the morning. We're going to say, let's check the bathrooms. Is, is it the same paint? Different colors. I don't know the same paint, but it's different colors. It's either a gray black paint this morning in the bathroom was like a yellow paint because the partitions are black and you can see it so we're doing this thing they know how to get it so you can see it which is very very sad that we have to do this yeah and two issues is one is your issue for painting and mm -hmm. keeping it not there getting rid of it and the other issue is how do we get this to stop you know and in a, the boys that's gym, a different um committee in the main gym, one thing that we're doing is looking at the cameras. You can see who go in the bathroom, but you don't know what time it happened because you cannot put cameras in bathrooms. So what happened in, in the gym happened between yesterday at 3 o'clock because I was in that bathroom at 3 o'clock yesterday and this morning. So it's, it's sad, but we're going to keep painting it. I mean, this stuff is unacceptable. We cannot have that in our schools. Yeah, we've got to work on the plan. Yes. All right. So uh, that's our first job every morning, and Dr. Manning called me in the morning, sent me a text every day, okay? Yep. So. Do we have matrons? Not yet. At least it ends by name. It's been posted. Okay. But these were for boys' bathrooms? Boys and girls. Oh, it was girls also? Yes. Okay. Any other questions on the painting schedule? All right. 1.04. I'm working with Ms. Roaring in finalizing the energy performance contract. We started working on this project in October. Uh, the energy contract is about 97% done. Uh, we have punched these items that are not complete. There's some items that were supposedly done and not done, so I did a full audit of the project. We are working with Johnson Control to finish all the items. Uh, one item is right here, it's too hot here. There's no way to control some of the heat. So pump don't go automatically. They have to balance this building at NFA. The only way I can keep some, when I step out, there was a call from Monica Guido, the music teacher in NFA. The gym was 54 degrees. So I had to go in and start the pumps. They won't go automatically. There's a problem with the system. 
and they have to fix that. The auditorium? Or the, the auditorium. The auditorium. They have it freezing. Yes. At the time. So, so we, we have to do it manually. It's not working automatic. In this building, when they put all these windows, they damage this roof, and we have these big bubbles. Of course, they said it's not them, so I called the company for the warranty because the roof's on the warranty. When they opened it, there was glass, and I know they replaced all the windows, so they voided the warranty. They are refusing to fix the roof, so we are not going to pay them until they fix the roof. We owe them $1.4 million. So we're working on that to finish all the items. And we're also working with them in a few schools that they were supposed to remove all the pneumatic controls, and they have it. So when I was doing the fire inspection, I visited every classroom and every school. And I took pictures of the stuff that was not removed. So this past Monday, I was with them at South. They removed 99% of the pneumatics. I found one room today that it wasn't done, so I called them. And it's sad that I got to go with them, but if we don't follow them, they just don't do it. They want to close. I know they've been calling me Rory several times. They want to close and run. We're going to hold off until we know if they are 100%. Was, was, um, the, the, these controls, is that part of the reason why South at times was boiling? Boiling. Boiling South last week. The day that was 7 degrees, South was 100 degrees. So what they did in South is that they put the new system, but they did not disconnect the pneumatics. So they were both wrong. One fight the other. So this past weekend, Monday, we were there disconnecting all the pneumatic controls. And like in the presentation, they talked about setting up the, build, the heating in the heating season. That's where we are now in the heating season. And I inherited this, so I'm going to make sure it works before we finish this contract. So half of the, my time during the week is doing this. And the first thing I do every morning, like we do NFA with the bathrooms, is I get to Chestnut 645 <laughs> and go check the classroom to make sure they are at the right temperature. And what I did, I set up every classroom in the district at 71 degrees right now. I want to make it a little lower, but it takes a while in the morning to warm up the building. I also change the schedules. Instead of starting at 6 in the morning, I'm starting the heat at 4 in the morning. So when the kids get into school, they, the buildings are warm. I don't know if you saw me opening this iPad. It's all here. That's, this is my best tool right now. So I checked every morning to make sure the rooms are up here. But this building sometimes is too hard to hold. I see the windows open. I open that window. I'm sweating here. I mean, it's 75 degrees. It's right there. So they need, they have to find a way to fix that because it's on them. And in this building, we have heating through the ductwork and we have radiation, radiators. So if they both run at the same time, they get too high. And they have two thermostats, so they got to find a way to make them work. And this is on them. They have to. That was part of the contract. They had to do it right. That was, that was the part of the whole energy performance contract so that we would save money on heat by zoning everything. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem in this There's building, any South, yeah. and NFA means South was corrected because South, I checked it yesterday this morning, the whole building is between 70 and 72. Do, do you think that it pays to either contact teachers or, or principal and say, if something is out of line, please let us know. I don't know. Because sometimes they're, they're, they're intimidated not to call the board or call. No, they email me, roaring at me every morning. When there's a problem, we get the email. And I told the teachers, don't go to the email us because by the time you get to the principal to get to us, it might take an hour. So I get the emails directly from the teachers. Ms. Roaring and I both get the emails. So you, you get it. You can do you, whatever you do on your end when you get it. Is it fixed? Forever, or is it fixed just for that day? In every school, except for NFA, this building, and tourism itself, I just put in the heat on manually every day. So what I do, I do an override and lower the temperature. And you can do that only for six hours. Six hours again, go back, so I have to go back and do it again. That's what we're doing with the auditorium. This morning, I put the heat in the auditorium. Ms. Weirro called me, I step outside, I put the iPad on, and the only way to heat the auditorium in NFA is by a water pump. That work on a 12 o'clock, so I turn the water pump again to run the hot water. She texts me again that it's fine now. So, okay, so you're looking for the permanent solution. We not And we know what the permanent solution is. They just have to do the permanent solution. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hold that 1.4 million until everything works. That's now, yeah. Another thing that uh, we're fighting with them is part of the energy contract was that if, they don't, if we don't meet the savings, they have to cut a check. Well, when I did all my numbers, I worked with Ms. Roaring, they owe us $200,000 from last year in savings. And they have to pay us that money. Mm -hmm. because it's, and they know that. I asked them a question, they yeah. we know. I asked them, do you report that to the school? And the guy said, no, we haven't. I go, well, I got it here. So I spent about four days with the bills and with their projection, and they were $200,000 off. Did we have well, 
Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is there any documentation to Johnson Controls? Mm -hmm. Ms. Yes, we okay. have all the units. Yes. Good. Yeah, when it comes to the audit part, I work with Ms. Roaring. She's my boss. Well, there's there's not going to be savings. Right. Tell them to put everything in writing. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's not going to be savings if you have the heat on and then you open the window. There's no. So there, there, there's your savings that you know mm -hmm. what what the project was designed for. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue working with them. My goal is to have all this fixed by the summer. We're closer now. When we got it in October, it was really, really bad to the point that Kimberly and I talked, I don't know, four or five times a day. And I was getting 20, 30 emails every morning. Mm -hmm. Now it's down to about five or six. So we're, we're going to get there. We're going to fix it. Great. I'm sure, I'm sure the staff will be very, very happy. <laughs> Last night, then, you know, <laughs> I've seen some pictures of some thermometers, the yeah. thermostat. Yes. That were just just crazy. One thing that I'm doing, uh, Mark, is I'm working with the health and safety person in this building. Right before Christmas break, I spent two hours in the winter and we went room by room and checked the temperature. One problem that we have is some teachers, if you get too warm, they go into the unit and turn the blower. By doing that, they're not stopping the heat, they just stopping the fresh air. So they complain, the weather, we're not, it, it's too hot, we turn the blower off, but you gotta put it back on because every 50 minutes, that's the way that I get fresh air into the classroom. So today we have 11 classrooms at Heritage that were turned off by the teachers. So we're coming with a way, we're gonna make a little plate to put over the switch, screw it so they cannot, and they put a pencil and it's a little switch, they put, I don't know. We're gonna block that because I understand what they want and I don't blame them, but by doing that, they're just making it worse and they don't know that. So my goal is by the end of this month to be in every school and go to every classroom except NFA. NFA is gonna take me a week. It's just too big. All right. Well, that's great to work to make those things better. Those things. Okay. Any other? Anybody else have comments or anything to say? All right. Very good meeting. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Boom. I'm sorry that I had to run out. But but I do uh, that time to learn how to make your life. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were. Yeah.